Nice Girls Don't Get Rich. This is the title of a wonderful book by Louise P. Frankel, and I'm going to share with you today the top five takeaways from this book. If you are looking to get into investing as a younger person, and you're looking for answers on how to become financially independent, you've come to the right place. I'm Sophia, I'm a children's book author and illustrator, and I also make music for picnics, but I'm huge into finance and financial researching. I found that there is a real dearth of information and financial resources made by and for women. So I thought that on my channel, I can cover a few of these things and help you get started, mostly because my friends have been asking me to explain these concepts to them as well. Today I'm going to share with you five key takeaways from the book Nice Girls Don't Get Rich and this will help you on your way to learning more about finance and financial independence. Number one is social conditioning. This is a really fascinating point that Frankel brings up that lays a foundation for the rest of the tips in the book is that women are conditioned throughout our lives to feel more meek around the subject of earning money. It's almost seen as crass or improper for some for women to talk about money, to want to earn money, and to strive to be in positions of higher power. Frankel says we strive for survival and not wealth, which is a really key difference in men and women and the way we are raised. It's seen almost as wrong for women to want to earn money or to want to earn a lot of money. And this point really resonated with me especially when she talks about the subconscious way that these ideas can lurk in our minds. Because we all know, oh, we should want to earn money, right? But subconsciously, there are things that maybe have been brought up with us in our childhood, maybe have reflected on us through our classes, through the school system, and we start to learn that, you know, maybe it's wrong to want to strive to be financially independent. Here is a really good quote. Nice girls don't get rich in large part because of the social messages they receive when they are growing up. Money is power and most little girls are not taught to be powerful, they are taught to be nice. Girls are socialized to be caretakers, nurturers, and accommodators in society, not necessarily breadwinners. So as childbearers and caretakers, women often work jobs discontinually and are penalized for it and women are reluctant to ask for wages, perks, or raises reflective of, of the value they add to their organizations because they're not sure they deserve it. We don't envision ourselves getting rich. We are more concerned with playing our social roles in a way that others consider appropriate, and we don't develop the skills needed to make wise financial decisions. Does this mean we can't acquire wealth on our own? No, but it means that what you focus on is what you get and it's time to focus on getting rich. So that is a wonderful excerpt. This is only the third page of the book and already she is spitting some straight facts. As we get older, we continue to adopt that position that we know we shouldn't care much about finances. We can pass those responsibilities on to others and they'll take care of it. But this is why Frankel specifically states that nice girls don't get rich. She has an emphasis that our mindsets as young girls can carry on into when we are women, into our adult lives. So it's time to kind of figure out if you carry those limiting beliefs within you, because I know I definitely did when I started my financial journey, and see if you can squash those limiting beliefs and sort of overcome them. Our second big takeaway is not prioritizing your financial wellness. Right, so Frankel speaks on having nice girl syndrome in which you do things for others at the expense of yourself. Take your time to schedule in learning about finances, investing, and budgeting, and you can be strict on your budget. You don't have to give in to other people's requests to loan them money, to spot them for a month. I know that I have done similar things and you don't need to do that. <laughs> you need to schedule in this time to learn about finances just as you schedule in time to do things for other people. You want to do things for yourself and what better thing to do than set yourself up for success in the future. It's very easy to choose to remain financially illiterate, right? That's how I felt at first. It's easier not to delve into the world of finances because the more you look into it, the more you realize you don't know what you don't know. 
Frankel calls this being a financial ostrich in that you're sticking your head in the sand and you decide, you know what? I don't want to look at this. I don't want to know what taxes are. I, I don't want to figure out my 401k. I don't want to figure out my investments. I'd rather just not touch this at all. And a lot of my friends and even myself at some point felt like, gosh, this is too much. But I promise you, you are capable. You can research and understand these things just like anyone else does. When I first started learning about finances, I definitely felt some trepidation. I felt as though I was on a precipice, like teetering over and looking at this huge abyss filled with all of these things I didn't know. So I suggest starting small. You can start by reading this book, which gives a really good overview of things. This is not sponsored, by the way. I don't think anyone ever sponsors books, but you know what I mean? You can start small. I started watching even YouTube videos from reputable YouTubers. Um, I can create a suggestion list if you'd like. I started listening to podcasts about things I was interested in, especially around investing and real estate investing. And I dug into books. Every month I'll be posting a new finance review on books so you can choose to read them or you can choose to just take my condensed version of the book and the best bits of it. So subscribe if you'd like to see those in the future. Number three is a big takeaway from this book that you might be giving away your time and your services. I'm definitely guilty of this, but you have to charge for your talents. You can't let people take advantage of you because you want to be a nice girl. Uh, you definitely deserve to be paid for your talents. I used to tutor kids in the neighborhood and I realized I was charging $50 less than another guy with comparable skills. $50, that's a lot of money. I was shocked to say the least. People will take advantage of your kindness if you let them. So it's okay to be financially savvy and it's okay to ask for what you deserve. And a tip I really took away from Frankel's book is to create time boundaries and stick to them. So while it's good to be there for your friend, if they're complaining to you for two hours every single night about their ex-boyfriend, it's okay to say that you don't wanna hear it right now and that um, you can uh, maybe just schedule like an hour a week for that, you know? That's definitely not from personal experience, but no, I love being there for my friends, but there is a point where you're just going above and beyond and you need to create time boundaries. This is a huge thing for me. Um, I definitely have let other people dictate my schedule and my free time. And as I got better at saying no to that, I was able to spend more of my time improving my own life, looking into my fan finances and really understanding what I want to strive for in the future. So if you're having trouble creating boundaries and especially time boundaries, you might want to reevaluate how you're spending your time. It's, it's not mean to set boundaries. It's not wrong. It's, I'm not telling you to cut all your friends off and never speak to them again, but it's about finding the balance in the boundaries. Okay. All right. Number four is a big one. And I see this a lot and I've experienced this, it is social pressure. Make sure to stick to your own budget. I know when I'm with my friends, I feel like spending more money because they spend a lot of money and it's easy to acquiesce to that social pressure and feel like you perhaps need to buy the latest and the greatest to keep up with everyone in your group. But I assure you, investing that money and seeing it grow will be far more valuable than buying a bunch of stuff you don't need. I used to spend a lot of money thrift shopping and albeit this is not like going to Rodeo Drive and buying like a new luxury designer bag, but it's still not great in that I was spending money on things that I definitely didn't need per se. After adopting a more minimalist mindset, I stopped buying things that I only wanted and didn't really need. And since then I've been able to spend so much, <laughs> spend, <laughs> no, since then I've been able to save so much money by really evaluating my purchases my soul like kind of winces now when I see my friends buying like random things like squishmallows, honestly. A lot of them are into that and it's good to enjoy your life. I'm not saying never buy a squishmallow or like a really expensive camera or anything like that. Make sure you're paying towards your debts more than you're paying someone else, right? Pay yourself in the future. 
first. I'm not trying to sound judgmental, I hope I never do, but I've been there and I just know, I'm like, look back at myself and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Like, don't do it. Don't buy. I don't know. I, I've bought some. I haven't bought like random things in a long time, but oh, here's a good one. I used to buy Disney pins. Like, I was so into it. I like search on eBay. I'd like order Disney pins. Don't do that if you don't have the money to do that. Pay off your student loans. Then you can buy a strawberry cow squishmallow. It's all about balance. You can have a squishmallow party once in a while, but pay yourself first. And now for the fifth and final tip and the biggest takeaway possibly from this book and in life in general, it is a huge mistake to not be investing. If you are anything like me or my friends, you probably might hear something like, I know I should invest, but I don't know how or something like finances are so confusing how will i a simple turtle be able to understand all this my camera cut out after that i think he was tired of hearing me talk so please enjoy these nice b-roll footage shots from my latest vacation but if you relate to any of those sayings it might be time to try to learn more about finance and really dig in i know it can be super frightening I've been researching financial independence for a little over two years now, and at first it was incredibly daunting. I didn't know how to invest, what a 401k really was. I didn't even have a brokerage account, but you have to be willing to know what you don't know. There will be a lot of gaps in your knowledge that you didn't even know were there, but it's time to get started. And by learning how to open up in Roth IRA or how to contribute to your 401k, you are really going to be helping out your future self Especially if you are younger, the money you make now is going to be worth more, significantly more, than any money you make in the future because of the power of compounding interest. If you like more videos on financial independence, please let me know and subscribe for updates. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm super interested in all things finance.